the previous lecture on the depth of anesthesia monitoring. We'll be today continuing the discussion further. Over to you, Dr. Gannon. <clears throat> Uh, uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, we'll continue with our previous talk on this. Uh, Exilpeka, can you please enable to share my slides? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, Dr. Gyanendra, you can do it. Yeah, thank you. Well, I hope everyone can see the slides now. Yeah, Dr. Gyanendra, we can see the slides. So, uh, thank you. I'll start from where we left. <laughs> Just a small quick uh, recap of what we learned the previous day. <clears throat> that is, uh, what is anesthesia? I mean, how we define educate anesthesia? What is inadequate anesthesia? What underdose and overdose actually uh, comprises of inadequate anesthesia. Then having said that, <clears throat> uh, since the conception of this uh, word anesthesia, or since we are able to provide anesthesia to the patient, patient during surgery, we have been str struggling to find the correct, uh, I mean the adequate, to know whether we are providing the adequate depth or not. So there were several attempts made and uh, uh, to define anesthesia and define adequate depth stages of anesthesia of which we know Udell's uh, classification is the most was the most uh, <coughs> commonly used classification for either anesthesia but nowadays because um, uh, of the that was for uh, was given primarily for ether anesthesia so that is now almost obsolete because uh, now we are using muscle relaxants and TIVA, which, which is different from what we used to use earlier at the ether. So there were new attempts to define depth of anesthesia and in that there were various uh, uh, parameters which were looked into. So initially uh, there were some something kind hemodynamic responses, autonomic responses like heart rate, and uh, blood pressure which changes with depth of anesthesia. Later on, uh, uh, but again, that was, this was something which used to vary with, uh, can be altered with drugs and uh, conditions like blood loss. So it was very difficult to actually um, show, uh, tell that it was because of change in depth, anesthetic depth or something. So uh, there were more scores were derived like PSRT score, which was the most common one to be used. But again, this was not free from, uh, uh, I mean, it was not very much reliable. So uh, another technique was isolated form forearm technique. Uh, but all these were subjective methods. So a search for objective methods <laughs> continued and uh, we uh, came up with spontaneous surface electromyogram followed by lower esophageal contractility that is spontaneous and provoked and later on heart rate variability. Very, very. But again, as I said, <clears throat> these were also not very reliable parameters. So ultimately the search for uh, newer monitors or better monitors continued, which could provide us objective, reproducible and continuous measurement of depth of anesthesia. And so we came up with two kind of monitors, objective monitors, EEG and evoke, uh, auditory evoke potential based monitors. And these monitors are the one which we use them presently and they are they enable us to uh, monitor the depth of anesthesia even when the patient has lost, lost all responses to external stimuli. That is, they are not dependent on patient's movement or other things. <clears throat> so having said that, uh, we just had a look uh, of what were the monitors which were developed. 
So the EEG based monitors in that we, uh, there were some indices like comp compressed spectral uh, array, spectral edge frequency, median frequency. This, this we all know is the most popular out of them. Then entropy, narco trend and other, they came into many of them. Similarly, evoke potential based monitors like somatosensory evoke potential, visual evoke potential, auditory evoke potentials and so on. But the most common one which is being used is auditory evoke potential. <clears throat> Now, uh, I would uh, not go into these uh, things which we have discussed uh, last time. Let me uh, take you to uh, this we all discussed, EG based monitors. <laughs> if you have any queries regarding this, I will just take the questions later on. Let us just quickly uh, come on to what are the EG based monitors. The EG based monitors are actually the uh, EEG is nothing but the record of electrical activity of the brain and uh, for assessing neurophysiological function of the brain, which is non-invasive, inexpensive, and objective method, right? So this is uh, a schematic representation wherein you can see the electrodes are placed on the scalp. This is called 1020 system of electrode placement. Uh, and then uh, you get some recordings over the monitor, which is called an electroencephalogram. This is the type, type of uh, recording we receive. And you will see that it is a very irregularly irregular uh, uh, recording, something like ventricular fibrillation, and very difficult to interpret. Okay. <laughs> but if we see that these waves, actually these EEG wave forms, which you're seeing on this monitor, are actually formed by the fusion of different uh, waves of different frequencies. So, I mean, they are made up of high frequency, low amplitude waves to low amplitude, high, uh, high, uh, sorry, high amplitude, low frequency waves. So, depending on the various, uh, uh, depending on the amplitude and uh, frequency, these waves can be divided into uh, different bands, which is called as gamma, beta, alpha, theta, and delta, wherein the high frequency, low amplitude waves actually they uh, they represent alertness or awareness <coughs> and uh, awakeness whereas uh, uh, low frequency and high amplitude waves are with, are when the patient is relaxed or sedated or sleep now similar changes occurs like when a patient from alert to sleep these the waveform pattern changes the same changes occurs during anesthesia also so this property is taken into, uh, into consideration while uh, analyzing these waves to uh, identify the depth of anesthesia. So alteration in EG under anesthesia change, tells us about the change in the state of consciousness. But mind it, I will also like to tell you here that these EG changes can sometimes occur because of tissue injury like cerebral ischemia or hypoxia. So, uh, if there is a, any injury to the brain tissue, the changes of hypoxia uh, in or ischemia can be can cause changes in the EG waveforms also. But usually, when we are measuring depth of anesthesia in a normal patient, that is because of change in the state of consciousness. And these uh, these change actually provide important information about the brain under anesthesia. And that's why the, this has increased our interest in the EEG based monitors in the clinical practice. Now, if you see, this is an electrocardiogram. You can see this is how the strips of electrocardiogram runs, which, which are, uh, you can see coming out of, from these various ele uh, electrodes placed over the scalp, 20, 10, 20 system. But you know, reading this electrocardiogram is a very tedious task and nothing can be understood of what is coming out of this. Okay. So what we do is we devised uh, instruments or equipments which can give us process EEG. For process EEG, we do not use all 10, uh, this 1020 system, but we only use few electrodes over the scalp. Rather than scalp, I would say over the forehead. So these monitors, 
will use see here you have sorry these red these colored uh, markings which you are seeing here this is the place where we keep the electrodes over the forehead to record the record <clears throat> So this in this picture you can see the. Hey, but the saturation is uh, In this picture you can see that the electrodes of are placed over the forehead, correct? So now just by using these four electrodes over the forehead, we can capture the EEG signals and then use them to give some index number. And that will tell us the depth of anesthesia. So process EEG monitors use proprietary algorithms to generate dimension less values, which is called as index value or dimension less number called index value. And so, so that we can know what is the exact depth of anesthesia. So this is called processing of EEG. Okay. So uh, let's see how, what is happens during processing of EEG. See that. These are the electrodes placed here. Uh, can you see the pen here? Uh, I will use pointer, laser pointer, this red color dot. <clears throat> see, these are the electrodes placed over the frontal region or forehead. From here, the raw EEG signals are picked up. Now, these are very minute signals in microvolts. So they are amplified and filtered to give us a digital analog digital <coughs> converter here is there to give us a, a EEG signals, which are again filtered. So let us see what happens. Uh, see, this is a conceptual design of processing of EEG monitors, of processed EEG monitors. What happens is whenever there is a signal, this signal passes like here, let's see again. Whenever a signal is generated, it passes through this uh, filter and amplifier, and then it is divided into two. One is EMG signals, which are segregated, and the rest are EEG signals. <clears throat> so based on the frequencies, these are divided. EMG are of higher frequency and EEG are of lower frequency. Less than 30 or 32 uh, frequencies signal are forms the EEG signals and more than 32, they go into the EMG signal. So they are filtered and here, and now this EEG signals, they pass through the algorithm, okay? These signals, they pass through the algorithm here, and after, process, after this algorithm, and this signal is processed, our index number is generated, <clears throat> okay? Along with that, <clears throat> uh, EMG, the EMG, EMG component is also displayed over the screen. So we get two numbers. One is the index number plus the EMG component of from the uh, electrodes. So this is the, uh, how the, these monitors, they work. They amplify the signal, they filter the signal, the filter into EMG and EEG, then all artifacts are removed, then EEG signals are passed through the algorithms, uh, 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 algorithms, algorithm which is proprietary of different type of uh, EEG monitors, and after that passing through the, through that algorithm, a number or index is generated, which gives us an idea about the depth of anesthesia. So based on ba this, based on the same principle, we have multiple uh, EEG based monitors present in the market today, and some of them, as you can see here, this is a bispectral index which then E entropy, narco trend, auditory work potential monitor based uh, called A-line monitor, then patient index, uh, state index, set line view, all know, snap two. These are the, from various companies, these are monitors. And you can see this, these are the various monitors which are available in market and many more are there, which I have not <coughs> placed here. Today, I'm going to talk about these three monitors. One is the BIS, the second is the entropy, and third is the narco trend. Okay, all the all of these uh, monitors they are having the same basic principle of working. Let's see one by one. See what is the application of these EEG monitors in the operating room. We know that general anesthesia has four main components. That is hypnosis, amnesia, 
antinociception and immobility these are the four components of a uh, balanced anesthesia general anesthesia right hypnosis that is unconsciousness amnesia not avoidance of recall antinociception that is not uh, perceiving the pain and immobility well what we are monitoring by this depth of anesthesia is only hypnosis okay we are actually monitoring unconsciousness hypnosis <clears throat> rest all are the secondary effects what we are monitoring is hypnosis hypnosis is associated with change in brain electrical activity or eeg pattern why how how can we monitor hypnosis because we change in uh, the consciousness or hypnosis there is a change in the brain electrical activity or eeg pattern that means from the state of wakefulness to the state of unconsciousness there is a transition in the eeg activity okay and let's see here you can see this graph as it moves from left to right you can see there is a change in the low voltage high frequency to slow waves and ultimately burst suppression or isoelectric time so these are the changes which occurs from a wakefulness you have you have this kind of wave then sedated and anesthetized and finally isoelectric time so this is how the wave form pattern change <coughs> what are the effect of anesthetics on eeg how are we able to monitor uh, uh, <coughs> depth of anesthesia using eeg monitors see gibbs et al in 1937 first reported that this that the anesthes anesthetic drugs has the effect on eeg and this is the basis of the formation of the eeg to monitor depth of anesthesia right? so what are the changes the anesthetic drug Use. You can see initially there is a phase of paradoxical excitation. When whenever you give an anesthetic drug to a patient, the initial phase is paradoxical excitation, wherein you have a desynchronized fast beta uh, activity prominent in the frontal region. <clears throat> okay, this is a phase of excitation, wherein you have low amplitude and high frequency fast beta activity present in the frontal region. as the depth increases there is a change and this change is anterior topographic shift that means fast beta activity moves posteriorly towards the occipital region whereas slow synchronized alpha waves appear in the frontal region so as the depth of anesthesia increases there is a synchronization and appearance of slow alpha waves in the frontal region <clears throat> and if you further increase the depth of anesthesia the eeg achieves a burst suppression that is in between you have isoelectric line then you have some activity then isoelectric line and finally a complete isoelectric line <clears throat> this is how it changes according to the increase in the depth of anesthesia now these changes in the eeg pattern is being is picked up by the eeg monitors and then processed these changes are processed to deliver a number to us <clears throat> so now we should understand depth of anesthesia is neither stable nor constant but a dynamic condition so it's not that you have right now the patient is adequately said uh, anesthetized the next moment there can be change in the condition which can depend upon which actually depend upon multiple factors like dose of anesthesia and the stimulus you are providing so that can change the dynamics <clears throat> so these processed eeg monitors they continuously analyze eeg signals using algorithms translate them into simple numerical indices that corresponds to the level of consciousness and give us the uh, real time change in the depth of anesthesia so this is to be important this is important that it's a continuous change which is being picked up by this uh, by these monitors and uh, the numbers are be provided to us now let's come to the first monitor that is high spectral <coughs> index monitor if you see this uh, most of you must have seen this monitor either in as an isolated uh, <coughs> isolated monitor which is shown in this picture or now most of the anesthesia work stations they have got integrated modules within the machine where you don't need to have an isolated monitor but the modules are available 
which can attach with the uh, anesthesia machine and you can use that for monitoring depth of anesthesia. So let me see, uh, see this monitor. This is the BIS monitor, which you, and you can see there's a value given here, which is telling you that the BIS is 52, okay? <clears throat> now, this is a number, this is a dimensionless number, 52. This is the BIS value or BIS index. This is the electrode. Here you can see the electrode, which has got four, and there's a sensor, one, two, three, four. This is called BIS sensor having four electrodes. One, two, this is the third one, this is the fourth. And this is a <coughs> unit which actually process, process the uh, EG signals. This is this end is connected to the sensor here, and this end is connected to the machine here, and the, this screen displays the values. Now, there are various types of sensors. This is the most common one, which most of you must have seen it. This is a BIS quattro four electrode sensor. Okay, one, two, three, four electrodes, the sensors here for use of adult patient undergoing anesthesia or sedation. Besides that, when you use BIS for an extended period, like in, uh, in ICU, when you are monitoring sedation for say many continuously for two, three days, so we, there are different kinds of sensors, BIS extend sensors. They are similar sensors, but they can be used for a longer period of time. Then for pediatric use, you have got uh, uh, pediatric sensors. Sometimes you may find there are only three electrodes for, over it. Here in this, you can see four electrodes. And the a new sensor, which is called bi bilateral BIS sensor, BIS bilateral sensor, which can be placed on both sides both, uh, and detect hemisphere. Uh, I mean, uh, over, it can uh, capture EEG from both the hemisphere, detect hemispheric differences in the brain, uh, and may be used for advanced monitoring applications. So these are the various sensors available for use with this monitor. Okay. So now how, would, how does it, do we apply them? You know, this in this picture, you can see the BIS sensor has been applied, wherein this is the sensor one, I mean, electrode one, two, here is three and four is here. Three is over actually the temp, uh, temp, temple. <clears throat> so this is how it is applied. And sensor is placed in the patient forehead, which actually captures the electrical activity. Then this uh, uh, electrical activity passes through a property algorithm which is actually a uh, propriety for the, of the company and is not disclosed to anyone. And using that algorithm, a number is calculated in a band is displayed as a dimensionless number between zero to hundred, which is called a BIS index. Now zero means there's no electrical activity or isoelectric line, whereas hundred uh, tells you that the patient is wide awake. There is no sedation, anesthesia, anything. He's absolutely awake. So this is how. Now, before applying these sensors, you have to be very careful that uh, you have to clean the surface very uh, nicely. There should be no oil, no hairs, and uh, it should be clean so that the sensors can stick well to the underlying skin uh, and provide good quality signals. Because if the quality of signals are not good, then the reliability of the readings would go down. <clears throat> or that they won't be revived. So let's see what does happen. <clears throat> so here is a one channel EEG. This is a one channel EEG, only one side you have applied. Okay. What will happen? The EEG uh, signals will be pre processed, artifacts will be detected and removed, and then a e EMG would be segregated. That is, all the uh, all the uh, signals in the frequency band above 32 would be separated from those below 30. So these are the EMG signals. Now those signals which are having frequency of 32 Hertz or less will be processed by, by this method. That is fast Fourier transformation, bispectral analysis, burst suppression analysis, okay? 
and they will generate some relative beta ratio, bispectral ratio, and birth suppression ratio. All these parameters will be taken up into account, and after processing, an index number will be generated. Okay, all these parameters will go, and ultimately, an index number will be generated. This index number is called as BIS index. This is evaluated by the uh, by the person who is monitoring the patient, and then he will now see, depending upon the BIS index, whether the patient he will come to know about the state of the depth of anesthesia. Hundred would say patient is awake, respond to normal noise. Eighty would be something around eighty would be some light sedation. Around sixty, eighty to sixty, that should be a deep sedation. From sixty to forty, it would be adequate pain of anesthesia. Below forty, if you go, it is called deep hypnotic state, and you will start having burst suppression. That is intermittent isoelectric line and bursts and bursts. And finally, at zero, at flat, there would be no electrical activity or flat line. So this is how the bis, the EEG signals are processed to give an index, and which is then evaluated based upon the values of that number. <clears throat> Now, base index values at various steps of anesthesia, you can see here. In this monitor, you can see the there is a base value which is being described here is 48, which actually is the adequate depth of anesthesia. As I just told, base value between 40 to 60 is considered as adequate depth of anesthesia. Now, see the next picture. Here, the base value is 24. This is called deep hypnosis, whereas the patient is having this less than 40, that is the depth of anesthesia is more. It is not required. We are overdosing the patient. And then in the third picture, if you further increase the depth of anesthesia, you will see that this is zero. That means that the, from here onwards, there is an isoelectric line. So there is no activity at all brain activity. So this is isoelectric line. So this is how you can actually monitor depth of anesthesia based on this. But if you see this monitor, there are multiple other parameters which are displayed over this monitor. It's not just this value, but it's like you have a BIS. This is a monitor which was the first monitor developed by the ESPECT medical system. Okay, This is called BIS XP. And you can see it is giving a number called BIS or bispect index, which is here is 44. Besides that, if you see, there is something called as SQI, that is signal quality index. This signal quality index is a bar or histogram which tells you about the quality of signal. Here you can see that there is a bold or uh, yellow line seen till the last, that is the quality of signal is very good. Okay. <clears throat> so for ideal, ideally, it should be 100%. Okay. The next parameter which is displayed is EMG. EMG is the electromyography activity from frontalis muscle. I just told you how the EEG algorithm separates e EMG, sorry, BIS algorithm separates EEG from EMG. So whatever EMG signals are there, that would be calculated and the EMG bar is shown in the EMG bar. This EMG bar here is absolutely vacant. So there is no uh, EMG or there is no contamination from the frontalis muscle. Then you can see the EEG, the raw EEG, which is being recorded and is processed. <clears throat> Besides that, you can see SR. SR is nothing but called suppression ratio or birth suppression ratio. What does it mean? I'll just discuss it later. <clears throat> and this is the trend. This, if you see over time, how the BIS has gone. If you can see here, there was, there was some BIS between 14 and 15, and suddenly there was a rise. Probably here the patient became slightly awake. <clears throat> okay, then it returned back and then it's going like this. So this is how it is showing the trend. What is birth suppression ratio? Birth suppression ratio is <clears throat> if you record an EEG over a period of time. So for how much percent of time or how much time percent of time the, there was an isoelectric line. To understand it better, if suppose I record an EEG for one minute and for 15 seconds, there was no activity or there was isoelectric time. So birth suppression ratio is 15 
that is 25 percent 15 seconds out of 60 seconds 25 percent it was the perspiration and rest of time there was activity okay. so this is called as the burst suppression ratio we'll discuss it again now this was the first monitor which was there available recently there have been changes by the monitor as you can see now the presently uh, isolated monitors look like this this is called BIS Vistra monitoring system. This again was released by Aspect Medical System and it has similar values like BIS value. Now, instead of uh, signal quality index, here you have the signal quality index in the form of bars. And you can see there are just three bars which are seen. That means the quality of index is not adequate. It should be at least four bar and ideally five bars. <clears throat> so, the, this value which is being recorded here may not be very reliable. Then you can see the EMG bar. Here it is showing the contamination by from the, EM, that is the EMG which is being there. So EMG activity is there. Uh, this has got a different um, usefulness. We'll discuss it later. Besides that, you have got the raw EG being displayed and a trend like the previous one. Also, you have the suppression ratio burst suppression ratio. And an, another new number which is being displayed here is burst per minute. This is nothing but the number of bursts per minute. If suppose over a minute, you had three burst suppressions. <laughs> so there was a burst, then burst suppression, burst, a burst suppression, burst, a burst suppression, and burst. So for there were four bursts and three burst suppressions. So this will give you number of bursts per minute, that is four bursts per minute. So these all are the numbers which are displayed by these uh, uh, monitors. Then uh, there was another monitor which came up in, which was called BIS, Vista Bilateral Monitoring System, which, used to, which is used to measure uh, EM, EG signals from bilaterally from the patient on both sides. So I had shown you the sensor before. So it is placed on both sides. And now it is now it is from two channel, it now became four channel EEG monitoring. So you can see here. Okay. <clears throat> so these are the raw EEG uh, being displayed here. This is the base number. BIS L from the left side. You can record from the right side. Uh, this is how you can do it. Okay. On at the also, you can see here there is called. Density spectral array, DSA. DSA is being displayed here. We had uh, last time learned about spectral edge frequency, SEF, which tells you something about the depth of anesthesia. This is density spectral array. I'll discuss it a little later. And as asymmetrical indicator. In between, if you see here, it will this bar in between will tell you whether there is a difference between the uh, depth on each side or EEG signals from each side. Ideally, they should be similar. The depth of anesthesia uh, recording should be almost similar from both sides. But if there is a, uh, if suppose on one side, there is already a uh, hypoxic area and you are recording from that area. On the other side, you have a normal area. So you may have a different value from each hemisphere. Okay, so this will tell you whether this, there is an asymmetry between the two hemispheres. These are the pi spectral, and these are used for advanced monitoring. <laughs> okay, next we come to the now. Uh, initially, these monitors, previous monitors I had showed you were from medical aspect, aspect medical system. Now this has been taken over by <coughs> COVID uh, Medtronics, and now they are producing these uh, base monitors which again has the same numbers like BIS. Uh, spectral, besides those BIS, EMG bar, uh, sig signal quality index, you have these digital spectral array here. You have spectral edge frequency and median frequency uh, here along with the uh, previous other things. You have got suppression time and suppression ratio. These are the other uh, parameters which are being displayed by the these new monitors. <clears throat> so uh, let's see. Next, BIS complete. This was BIS. Previous was BIS complete two channel monitoring system. This comes with four channel monitoring system. It is similar like 
vista by uh, bilateral monitor sensors <coughs> monitoring system so similar to two channel monitors with additional features of bilateral sensors to detect hemispheric difference in the brain and you know they, it will tell us the asymmetric indicator whether there is a difference in the uh, uh, i mean there is any difference in the uh, value from each hemisphere and ability to display left and right side of the brain okay so these are bilateral uh, monitoring systems now uh, let's see what these figures are these these figures if you see the previous monitor if i show you <clears throat> if i show you this here this and in this figure this this area this is called a this area is not there in the previous monitors which we have already said these areas as the spectral edge frequency and density spectral array density spectral array which are being displayed here what is the purpose of having these density spectral array actually you can monitor these these it's these things can also guide you about the depth of anesthesia what is this <clears throat> see this is base value with good emg signal Uh, signal quality index no emg so this is a very reliable value okay on the top of it you are getting some some values here which are from left side and right side sef that is spectral edge frequency and any symmetry between that <clears throat> so how these uh, spectral edge frequency no, sorry uh let's see ha huh. spectral analysis of eeg let's see what how is this uh, spectral edge is formed let me describe how the these figures here these things come on this monitor <laughs> see the spectral analysis of eeg what is do whenever there is a raw signal which is being picked up by this monitor you can see this is this is a raw eeg and suppose this is one second this second second third second and this is a time epoch suppose this we have taken for 3 seconds this is called as time epoch what does the fft do fft is fast fourier transformation this is an algorithm which breaks this into components of these waves suppose it has broken down into two components that is one is a wave or in the wave wavelength of uh, frequency band of 0.1 to 1 hertz and other is a frequency of 8 to 12 hertz okay so this is how it has been broken now when we plot this against frequency this power spectrum we get this this is a power spectrum okay now you can see it has got two peaks <clears throat> one it one is between 0 to 1 hertz here and other is between 10 to 12 hertz there is one peak here one peak here as we have as the raw eeg has been broken down into two components with one frequency here one frequency so you can see there are two peaks over this the segment of eeg can be compressed in okay uh, let's come next now this this figure which we are seeing and having two components that is two peaks one and two is actually having an x axis here and a y axis here okay this is a two dimensional image now last in the last lecture we learned that this this graph is representing suppose 3 seconds of the <clears throat> period now if we uh overlap the period of 3 seconds one after the other on the third axis that is z axis what will happen is we will get a uh, here we have x axis showing the frequency 
then this is a y axis showing the power spectrum and there is a z axis this is a time so this graph at this suppose this is at time we start from behind this is time zero then after time one after one minute after two minutes after three minutes after four or five and we keep on putting the graphs one in front of the other and we get this kind of three dimensional graphs okay 3d graph so if you see this graph and now after every set one time zero time one time two time three time four time five time six this we have kept it from one over the other from behind in front like this we can see this is called as compressed spectral array this we have learned in the last lecture <clears throat> now as we can see here we have one this green bar which i am showing on the first figure is one peak the same green bar if you see here is shown here in the second the another peak by, shown by red bar uh, red bar in the first figure is now being displayed by this red bar here so we have seen that there are two peaks which are being shown in the figure 2 what does these peaks signify <clears throat> these peaks signify that the frequency of these waves are maximally distributed in in these two wavelengths that means maximum wave uh, in the wave the maximum wavelength or maximum wave are of these two wavelengths <clears throat> that's why they have they have got these two peaks now this color red actually indicates the power the more the wave in that wave band the more the power and it becomes red and if the number of waves is less that means the power is less it will be denoted by color blue so whenever if you see that two peaks seen here that means two two prominent waves one waves are of 0 to 5 and other is 10 to 15 in these two frequency band you are seeing two peaks this is a three three dimensional spectrum having one x axis one y axis and one z axis now but even a monitor you cannot give three dimensional so what you do is you compress this power into back down so that you have time on this axis you have frequency on the x axis time on the z axis and y that is this component power has been compressed down or made flat so that only the colors can be seen you cannot see the height up upcoming waves that is hills and troughs but you can see the color now color blue represent low uh, low power that means less number of waves in this frequency and red yellow means more power red means still more power so the maximum power or maximum number of waves are of frequency 0 to 5 and 10 to 15 in this range now these frequencies are basically low frequency waves <clears throat> so the patient that means the patient is now under sedation or anesthesia if the patient becomes awake what will happen these yellow and red color will shift towards the right side here with a higher frequency and this area will become blue that means the number of waves are of high frequency more number of waves would be in the high frequency zone that means the patient would be less sedated or would be awake or out of anesthesia so as the patient become anesthetized the frequent the spectrum this power spectrum this red color moves towards lower frequency and as the patient becomes awake these colors will shift towards the right that is higher frequency and this can tell you about the depth of anesthesia <clears throat> i hope the things are clear and this red color will signify high power and blue color will signify low power having understood this now we can easily understand the let me go to that <clears throat> this monitor here this is telling at this point of time the frequency were distributed in this area then there was <clears throat> these frequency were omitted that is only these were left here that means patient becomes very deep and then again this shifted towards this side that is patient who started increasing 
and the frequency started moving high frequency, that becomes the, here the patient became light. So here the patient became deep. If you can see the cursor, this shows that the patient was too deep. This was educate. Here it has become light. And any difference on the between the right and left side is shown by this asymmetrical asymmetry here. So these are the various things which can be uh, uh, from derived from this monitor. Okay. I think I have done some by mistake. Anyway. <laughs> So we have understood these, what are the components of this burst suppression ratio. Okay. Delete these lines now. <clears throat> now burst suppression ratio, I told you that ratio of the suppressed activity period, total, total active period, that is burst and suppress, is AG over one minute. Over one minute, the amount of time when the, there was no activity over the total period, uh, that would give you the burst activity. Suppose for 30 seconds, there was no activity and over 30 seconds, there were burst, uh, I mean, there were activity, so burst suppression will become 50%. Higher burst suppression indicates depth, deeper anesthesia. If there is a burst suppression present, it will indicate Deeper anesthesia, deep plane of anesthesia, and this burst suppression will only come on the monitor when the value of your BIS will go below 50. That is, you are going towards the deeper plane of anesthesia. Your target during a general anesthesia is to is not to have a burst suppression ratio. That means for the adequate depth of anesthesia, the burst suppression ratio should be zero. If it is more than zero, if the burst suppression ratio is coming, that means you are on a deeper plane of this. <clears throat> One more uh, component which we should be able to understand is immobility and hypnosis. Remember I told you EEG, what we are monitoring is the electrical activity from the brain. And we are actually trying to, trying to quantify the hypnosis. Okay. But hypnosis is not equivalent to immobility. We have to remember that. A patient who is adequately anesthetized, that means he has got hypnosis, he is hypnotized or he is in an adequate plane of anesthesia, may still move. So, it is not a guarantee that a patient who is in the plane of 40 to 60 should not, will not move. Immobility during anesthesia can be a reflex movement from spinal cord itself due to a stimulus. So, if, but whereas what we are recording is the hypnosis which occurs in the brain. EEG analysis is not a good way to measure effect of anesthetic drugs on the spinal cord because we are not recording from the spinal cord. And thus, it's a not a, neither a reliable method for predicting movements. If you want to predict movement during anesthesia, the, the answer is neuromuscular monitoring, not BIS. BIS is for educate depth of anesthesia or only for hypnosis. A patient with adequate depth is unlikely to move. Yes, but there is no 100% surety that he may not move. Secondly, what is you are ensuring is that with adequate depth of anesthesia, there will be no recall or awareness from the anesthesia. Interpretation of base index. <clears throat> now, what is your interpretation? Let's see if this is our finding. Is the BIS, uh, BIS is 51. What should be your interpretation? Obviously, when I said 40 to, 50, 40 to 60 is the adequate BIS, this should reflect adequate BIS. But actually, I do not agree. See, BIS value is 51. I agree. But if you see, there is a signal quality index is on just two bars. I said it should be ideally five bars, but at least four bars. So signal quality index is low. So this becomes a non-reliable value. There is no, uh, no contamination from EMG. There is no EMG. Burst suppression ratio is zero. 
yes that is means he is not having birth suppression and scf is 20 that is this spectral edge frequency is 20.9 which itself says that the patient is not well sedated so this value 51 is not reliable so just by what the only purpose of picture, putting my this picture here is that just by seeing the figure you can not say that the patient is adequately anesthetized you have to see about the signal quality index other parameters being displayed and then only you will see you can also see there is some tachycardia from 105 which says that there is some kind of the patient is slightly and uh, lightly sedated so we should not jump onto a diagnosis just by seeing the picture <clears throat> now uh, we i told you that the site from where we record this eeg <clears throat> or base is the frontal but are there alternate sites for this electrodes yes you know at many a times especially when we are undergoing uh, uh, a patient is undergoing surgery over the head it's very difficult to place the electrodes over the frontal region if there is a frontal tumor <clears throat> so there have been studies we have uh, tried using other places like occipital placing the uh, electrodes on the occip occiput posterior auricular on mastoid process mandibular superior labial that is over the maxilla below the nose and on nasal <clears throat> so we have recorded from there you, there are certain studies available which com comparing from different places and they say that uh, they have shows comparable efficacy in compare this study and this published in march 21 say that there was uh, comparable efficacy in comparison to standard frontal monitors when they use the nasal monitor <clears throat> on the other hand uh, this study which was published in 2014 said that they do not agree between the base value do not agree between standard frontal position and an alternative mandibular position however during anesthesia maintain a maintenance period the mandibular position can be availably position can be availably used as an alternative position if the operative field renders the standard position i mean unavailable so they they have uh, actually said that this is alternatively they can be used but actually they would not be absolutely coinciding with each other <clears throat> Uh, so the still that means the reliability of these monitoring will further deteriorate when used in at other sites because these uh, monitors have been developed using the forehead uh, electrodes only <laughs> coming to the next monitor that is entropy entropy is the disorder or randomness the term entropy means randomness so what this monitor do is it picks the randomness in the signal randomness means the low high frequency irregular signals are random signals and the low frequency high amplitude more organized signals are less random signals. so highly irregular signals with variation of wavelength and amplitude over time that means the beta waves kind of signals would be high will give you high entropy values and will indicate a weak state <clears throat> whereas more ordered signals with less variation in wavelength and amplitude over time that is the theta wave delta wave, all these will show you low or zero entropy values and that indicates low probability of recall and suppression of brain activity that means a deeper plane of anesthesia so this is the monitor uh, this is how this monitor works <clears throat> to measure irregularity in signal in, in two eg frequency bands as i told you earlier these monitors they can separate using filters the emg from the eeg <clears throat> so here what does it do there are two values you get from this monitor one is called as state entropy or se other is called response entropy or re <clears throat> the se actually take account from only the low frequency waves that is from 0 to 30 or 32 <clears throat> this these uh, waveforms are analyzed and this value that is state entropy is given and the value of state entropy is 0 to 91 <clears throat> on the other hand the other values other uh, value which is is obtained using uh, frequency from 0 to 47 almost 
this will take account the signals eng signals plus emg signals eeg signals from uh, sorry <clears throat> brain and emg signals from the frontalis muscle so it will now use the all the uh, eeg uh, signals to drive another number which is called as response entropy and which is called 0 to 100 the value will be 0 to 100 normally so this monitor will give you will analyze signals in two ways one only the eeg signals that is less than 0 to 30 uh, from value from frequency from 0 to 32 and another which will include eeg plus emg signals uh, frequency from 0 to 47 and two values state entropy and response entropy will be generated if you see this algorithm it's similar to the algorithm we have seen with the this the eeg signal will be pre-processed artifacts will be removed then this will be broken into <coughs> uh, various bands one would be burst suppression one would be will pass through pass band filter of 0.8 to 47 hertz the center one which will actually include eeg plus emg and the other will be 0.8 to 32 which is only include eeg then they will be fft that is fast fourier transformation will break the waves into different wave uh, components spectral entropy will be uh, and they will now analyze this these wavelengths to form a spectrum and then generate a number which is called as state entropy from eeg signal and response entropy from eeg plus emg signals ultimately uh, <coughs> value will be generated based on eeg that is state entropy resp response entropy and burst suppression ratio so these three things will be displayed over the monitor state entropy response entropy and burst suppression ratio and based on these values, the evaluation of the depth of anesthesia will be done. So a state entropy monitor measures irregularity in the spontaneous brain and facial muscular activity. It uses proprietary algorithm to process EEG and frontal EMG signals and to produce two values that indicates depth of anesthesia, that is response entropy and state entropy. Response entropy is a fast reacting parameter based on both EMG and EEG, okay? So it is sensitive to facial muscle activation and indicates patient response to external stimuli. That means <clears throat> this is also taking account into um, activity from the facial muscle. Now, if suppose the patient has got a adequate hypnosis, that is EEG signals are no are under adequate anesthesia, but the EMG signal is there. So what will happen? The RE value will increase, but EG value will not increase. That is, SC will not increase. This will tells you that there is a, some stimulus and uh, like pain stimulus. This now you don't need to add hypnosis. You don't need to add anesthetic drug. You would preferably like to add analgesia here. So this property where you can also use EMG signals to uh, uh, in, uh, and which will change in, in response to external stimulus like pain would give you signs of early awakening and you can add some what you call as analgesia kind of thing. So this, this is also the basis of forming the newer monitors which have got a nociception concept in, included in it. We'll discuss it later. So response entropy is a fast reacting parameter based on EEG and MG and will uh, change with the external stimulus. Whereas state entropy, state entropy is a stable parameter based only on EEG, EEG signals and as is the hypnotic state of the brain. This is how the uh, uh, sensors look like. They may be of the, uh, various types. These are the two commonly available sensors for uh, entropy. Now, this is a module which comes with the G monitors and uh, you can you can now place these sensors or electrodes over the patient forehead, similar to what we did in this monitor. And now connect this uh, sensors to the monitor 
and on over the monitor you will have the values which will be displayed between 0 to 100 state entropy and response entropy two graphs you can see here you can see the 87 and 97 these are the two values of state entropy and response entropy which is actually telling you that the, this is the awake state <clears throat> As I discussed about the alternate site in the uh, base sensors, the alternate sites for entropy has also been evaluated and they have said that it was showing some good correlation with the normal site that is forehead. But again, these are only to be used in place you cannot use the uh, normal sites. And secondly, the values may sometimes mislead you, so you then may not be that reliable as from the uh, original site of application. So here you can see here, the, on the first three aspect, this, uh, this has been attached and you are getting the value here. <clears throat> Recording of electrical. Now see this has been placed. This is what we get on the monitor. Uh, and sorry, I'm just, I've, drawn some line over it, which is which may be distracting you. And so you can see this uh, value, which is here, 49 and 48, being shown in the green uh, signals, right? green circle. So this is how the values they come. Now, 49, 48 will tell you the adequate pain of anesthesia, like this. Range, I said, straight and response entropy from zero, no brain activity to 100 fully awake, whereas State entropy would be 0 to 91 when it's fully awake. <clears throat> Target range is again like this, 40 to 60. And when the values are near 40, there is low probability of consciousness, awareness, or recall. On the right side, you can see, as you go from an awake state to depth, deep anesthesia state, the state and response entropy would keep on gradually decreasing from awake to educate, to deep plane and to very deep plane. And when I said, when you have very deep plane, what, what it will also have? It will also have birth suppression ratio. And you can see the birth suppression ratio, 37 in the lowermost figure. So that means the, there's an isoelectric line available which tells that the patient is deeply, deeply anesthetized. So that is not required. <clears throat> Let's interpret the entropy values. You can see here, RE is 100, SE is 88. So this is in the patient is wide awake. Okay. Birth suppression ratio is zero here. That means obviously we don't expect any birth suppression here. <clears throat> Next, as we anesthetize the patient, both values start decreasing. There is this phase entropy response 78 and this state entropy 74. Usually, the more we, the difference between them is no, never more than 10 in awake state. And when the patient becomes anesthetized, the difference between the two values start coming, decreasing. Okay. So now it is 78, 74 with zero burst suppression. <clears throat> Still more. Now we are almost in the good plane of anesthesia that is 62 and 58 with zero burst suppression. Still, we go down. This is educate pain, definitely. Birth suppression, no response, response entropy and uh, state entropy, both are 47 now. And absolutely no birth suppression is zero. So, no birth suppression. Now, you see, we are going to some deeper part of it, deeper plane that is response entropy is 40 and SE is 37, and there is still no birth suppression. Okay. But as we go further deep, you can see with straight entropy, uh, both are below 40 and birth suppression has appeared. That is 10% of that uh, uh, iso, uh, line is isoelectric or he, there is no activity. So this is a very deeper plane, plane of anesthesia. Ideally, we do not need any birth suppression during educate plane of anesthesia. So change in entropy from awake state to deep hypnosis, BSR appears only in the deep hypnosis state. Birth suppression ratio will not be available in the normal uh, educate anesthesia. Now interpreting this, this is 99 and 87. So what it is? Obviously, it shows that patient is awake. But if you see the graph on the 
right you see there is a rising trend so this graph should be seen and actually this indicates the awakening of the patient from deep anesthesia here it was deep and now it is gradually coming up and now it has reached to this value that is when the patient is quiet so when the patient is awakening from anesthesia you will see this kind of trend over the graph the third monitor which i told you is narco trend well not so popular as the other two ones but uh, it is also a eeg based monitor which was entered in year 2000 and made for depth of anesthesia and it actually has a classification not like 0 to 100 or something uh, in the previous monitor it just gives us uh, values in uh, letters a b c d like this okay so you have this is an narco trend monitor the values are distributed from a to f a means awake and f tells you that the uh, it's a <clears throat> general anesthesia with in increasing birth suppression that is patient uh, very deep awake deep hypnosis so on the right side you can see a b c d what actually they tell you d and e are the what is the plane for anesthesia <clears throat> d and e okay <clears throat> they are further divided into 14 sub stage Uh, stages a b zero b one b two and so on. You can see over the screen. Well, again, this it follows the same kind of uh, uh, how it is analyzing is the same. Automatically analyze the raw EEG using uh, uh, to produce a number of parameters, and actually it is again using a proprietary algorithm to which is applied to give you all the automatically classified EEG based on visual classification of EEG scales. Okay. so this is the algorithm similar to the bis value now what is the classification stage a is awake to stage f is absolutely deep hypnosis stage d and e indicate appropriate depth of anesthesia as a refinement to a to f scale in newer version monitors you are also getting eeg index 0 to 100 100 being awake and zero means very deep anesthesia these are in the new monitors you may also get value with along with a to f scale you will also get values from 100 zero to 100 <clears throat> if you see the activities corresponding to these uh, stages alpha activity when well, then you have beta activity a is alpha b is beta c is theta delta and finally birth suppression so what you want is d and E. These are the stages for educate depth of anesthesia. If you compare with the BIS, you see from 40 in 60 to 40 on this y-axis, you have the BIS scale, which will correspond to somewhere around D and 40 will correspond to E. So this is how this is the this is the actual the area where you want the patient to. other monitors which are available but we will not go into each one of them they all are working with the similar principles <clears throat> let's uh, quickly see the application of eeg based monitors now one thing i have told you that intraoperative monitoring depth of anesthesia is one important aspect which is uh, which is i mean uh, which these monitors are used for so in term intraoperative awareness and recall to maintain adequate depth then guiding anesthetic management to avoid underdose and overdose <clears throat> birth suppression now this can be another use of these monitors because whenever you want brain protection like uh, aneurysm surgery for brain or some whenever you want birth uh, pharmacological protection you can use this monitor to guide you as it will show you birth suppression then <clears throat> adequacy of nociception now new monitors will be able to tell you about the adequate say of uh, nociception or pain control also peri operative outcome you as you know early recovery and post operative mortality <clears throat> uh, both can be see if you have uh, proper depth you can have early recovery if you have more depth you, there there are in incidences of post operative cognitive dysfunction and mortality so outcome can be affected by monitoring depth of anesthesia again and a diagnostic tool in case of epilepsy suppose patient has non convulsive epilepsy where you are not able to monitor any convulsions over the, i mean you are not able to see any convulsions externally but there is a 
<clears throat> EEG having seizures, you can diagnose with EEG based monitors, non convulsive seizures. So, there are multiple applications of these monitors besides <clears throat> measuring depth of anesthesia. Now, process EEG can be used in ICU also to give you the level of sedation in mechanically ventilated patients, records non convulsive seizures, detects cerebral ischemia and post anoxic encephalopathy. You know, uh, EEG monitors can be used to tell you about the brain death also. They can be an ancillary test uh, uh, used for brain death. So they, because they can detect ischemia, uh, ischemic changes and hypoxic changes. So these are other use in ICU. And prognostication of clinical outcomes. Well, <clears throat> birth suppression is a marker of hypoxic ischemic brain injury. Those patients who who have a hypoxic brain injury will have burst suppressions or there will be low birth, less bursts and more of burst suppressions. So these, the, and if they are, you can prognosticate what would be the outcome in these patients. So there are multiple other applications. We discussed it that incidence of awareness is different, is 0.1 to 0.2% surgical cases, which counts to be one to two cases, every thousand cases. But in high, uh, uh, high uh, risk surgeries, like obstetric cardiac, that can be one to two percent, and, and even literature says up to forty percent. The use of AEG based monitors has been recommended by American Society of Anesthesiologists and National Institute of Health and Care Excellence UK in such high risk patients. Now, remember, I'm when I'm saying it has been recommended in for use in high risk patients. That means. They have not recommended for routine use, but they have for high risk patients. We will see why not in the routine use. <clears throat> These are the surgeries which can, which are conditions which can with high risk of uh, awareness. Now, several studies have demonstrated that use of base monitoring for depth of anesthesia will reduce risk of awareness, risk of amount of anesthetic agents used, better cardiovascular stability, faster emergence, and reduce recovery time and reduce incidence of post-operative nausea vomiting. <clears throat> so these are the benefits. This be aware trial, which you must all be aware also, <clears throat> that this was last trial using 2,463 patients or using high risk uh, patient at high risk of awareness during anesthesia, and they were randomly allocated to either BIS group or routine practice. And BIS guided Anesthesia significantly reduced the risk of awareness. This was the results of this study. Okay. So, this was a trial published in Lancet in 2004, which is called Be Aware Trial by Miles et al. So, they said best guided anesthesia reduced the risk of awareness in at risk adult surgical patient undergoing general anesthesia. However, the cost was also added to it. But then there was another trial which was published in 2008, Be Unaware and Bag Recall trial in 2011, which, were, which did not show this uh, superiority of BIS protocol. <clears throat> the superiority of BIS protocol was not established. Uh, and in fact, they said fewer patients in the ETAC, that is end tidal anesthetic concentration group, where you monitor end tidal gas con uh, anesthetic concentration, concentration or MAC using your Inhalation during nurses, yeah. Group fewer patients in these group uh, than in this group experience awareness. So it was rather a negative study. <coughs> so now the controversies between these studies has actually been there since long. So no clear evidence for routine use is still available. Results because results of base studies are contradictory, and <coughs> till date, most of the studies are underpowered. See, there's incidence of 0.1 to 0.2%. To have a very uh, good power study, you need at least for more than 40,000 patients, an RCT of prospective 40,000 patients, which is difficult to do it. So we, most studies are of, maximum studies are of some 15,000 or this. So we have underpowered studies. So very, no clear evidence is still available. This monitoring appears useful for patients who has a high risk of awareness and uh, <coughs> under TIVA. Two conditions where awareness, there is a high risk of awareness. Yes, it appears to be useful. And in TIVA, because in TIVA, you cannot measure volatile gas anesthetic concentration. So in these two, 
cases, it appears to be used. But in patients on inhalation anesthesia or volatile anesthetic, where you can you guide your anesthesia based on your uh, end tidal concentration of gases, utility of base monitoring is not proved. <clears throat> Again, base monitoring and post-operative outcome. It has been told that too deep anesthesia has led to poor post-operative outcome. That means deep cumulative anesthesia, where BIS values are actually less than 45. Uh, every, most of the time, when the BIS value remains remain less than 45, it increased the mortality, one-year mortality. Similar results were found in different studies, uh, other study where low BIS value uh, was a predictor for increased mortality at one and two years. <clears throat> Again, hazard ratio for death, higher with deep anesthesia. This study said that in a pa patient, we, uh, concluded that in a patient where this value of, of less than 40 was recorded for more than five minutes during the total period, compared to this monitor, uh, to other patients who, who, in whom the BIS value remained above 40. <clears throat> Always, they had a higher ratio, higher hazard ratio for death. Means the, Mortality increased if the patient's BIS value went even less than uh, less than 40, even for a duration of five minutes or more. So this was the uh, 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 conclusion of this study. Another study said that duration of low BIS value, less than 45, was associated with intermediate term mortality <clears throat> in cardiac patients. This was in a study 2010. <clears throat> Uh, well, uh, uh, just to, I think I will skip this because <clears throat> not related much to this. Uh, let's come to the limitation of EG based monitoring of hypnosis. Well, artifacts from OT environment and, and poor quality signals makes your life index unreliable. This is one of the limitation of base monitors. Then various conditions like hypothermia, hypovolemia, neurological disorder can change the EG signal. So incorrect hypnotic state can be given <clears throat> to you. Another is the level of muscular block and EMG activity can interfere with your values. Okay. Then not perform reliably with all anesthetics. Certain anesthetics like ketamine or nitric oxide, they, the values with them are not reliable because they have a different mode of action. They stimulate the EEG activity rather than uh, the, I mean, uh, curtailing it down. So the values are not reliable. <clears throat> and tidal anesthetic concern guided sol anesthesia for inhalation appears superior to be best guided. So be unaware trial, this is outcome. So based on these, uh, these are some of the limitations of this. A new, another limitation which uh, I would like to tell you here is that now the studies have shown that it's not only the EEG from the cortex which affects your uh, depth of anesthesia. It's a subcortical level. Uh, the activity of subcortical level is also important like limbic system and other. <clears throat> so now these electrodes which are placed over the forehead, they are only pick up electrical activity from the cortex and not from the deeper structure. So that's why the reliability of sometimes you these uh, EEG values may not be reliable. So these are some of the limitations of the EEG monitors at presently available. <clears throat> uh, in large clinical trials, base monitoring failed to prevent awareness and also failed to reduce intraoperative drug consumption compared to uh, antiradial monitoring. Recent studies have found that subcortical structure of the human brain are also involved in state of anesthesia and during emergence from anesthesia. EEG based depth of anesthesia monitors that use only frontal EEG montage for signal analysis are probably unable to detect these changes and thus fail to uh, reduce intraoperative awareness in few patients. <clears throat> Future based EEG monitors should include more EEG signals, that is, cortical uh, occipital area and both uh, occipital area and both brain hemispheres and incorporate algorithm that include blood concentration of anesthetics 
and better EMG filtering methods to have more reliability. Development of monitor that use a combination of information of EG plus AEP should be considered. That is from uh, cortex as well as subcortically. <clears throat> However, in spite of some remaining ambiguity, the existing literature as a whole suggests that the level of hypno hypnosis during anesthesia, at least in patients with a high risk of awareness and adverse outcome, should be monitored by EEG based system. Though we do not have this recommendation for routine use of NCI by any of the societies or uh, guidelines, but yes, in patients with high risk of awareness, uh, as we have you know various surgeries, and, uh, and those who are likely to have adverse outcome, and in patients where you cannot monitor depth of NCI using and tidal carbon dioxide or and tidal anesthetic gases like TIVA, there the monitoring using EG based system should be helpful or is helpful. So, uh, this is uh, I can just continue for five minutes more to why not a standard of care at present. Primary question is. Does EEG-based depth of anesthesia monitoring allow monitoring to patient to recover more quickly and better after anesthesia? One question. Second is, does EEG-based depth of anesthesia monitoring reduce the risk of awareness during anesthesia? Does EEG-based depth of anesthesia monitoring have any effect on patient satisfaction or on the incidence of post-operative nausea vomiting? Or e is EEG-based depth of monitoring is cost-effective? So these are the primary questions before uh, which should answer this question? Why is it not a <clears throat> standard of care? At present, effect of EG based monitoring in the early phase of recovery has shown to reduce, uh, I mean, effect of EG based monitoring on depth of anesthesia on the early phase of recovery reduced by a few more minutes in TIVA. That too, with a grade three evidence. And there is no, and the contradictory evidence for inhalation anesthesia. Thirdly, the time saved not, have not shown any clinical economic significance. So is it really worth for monitoring every patient? Absolutely not. Secondly, for late phase of recovery, that is from the discharge of post, uh, from the post-operative recovery unit, there is a con contradictory evidence from various studies. Some says it is slightly better, some says it is not not shown any improvement, so there is no clear evidence as of now. <clears throat> Second question, does the EG based depth of NSA monitoring reduce the risk of awareness during anesthesia? Still remain inconclusive, insufficient scientific evidence about it. Does the EG based depth of NSA monitoring have any effect on patient satisfaction or on the incidence of post-operative meeting? Again, the evidence is contradictory in the literature. <clears throat> is it cost effective? Again, it's not clear. No solid conclusion from the scientific uh, evidence regarding patient benefit from EEG based depth of anesthesia monitoring. So, cost effective is also. So, when all the questions remain inconclusive, there is no standard guide, uh, I mean, good guideline which recommends these use of these monitors as a standard care of monitor. But yes, for uh, <coughs> patients who are at high risk and in TIVA, where you cannot monitor that token and say using uh, anesthetic gases, concentration, you, these are the good options for us. This we have uh, evidence I discussed just now that uh, there are some, some evidence are in favor, some are in against. Cocaine matters uh, analysis concluded that this monitoring was not associated with significant lower risk of awareness during relation anesthesia. So no evidence <coughs> here. Uh, TIVA risk of awareness was significantly lower in BIS guided compared to uh, BIS code. So some there is evidence in where TIVA is used uh, as in case of anesthesia. There we should there should the use of these monitors should help. <clears throat> Another important issue is reduced hypotensive episodes. Several uh, studies have shown that. Uh, Using these monitors reduce hypo, hypotensive episodes during interoperative period as well as vasopressor use in the interoperative period. So that is a beneficial effect we can have. 
so uh, there is uh, what I mean to say <coughs> may reduce incidence of vasomotor complication as a result of unnecessary deep anesthesia. That that is one advantage which has been proven in some studies. Low bis index as well as double low. Double low means when the bis value is low. Bis value low means there is a deep anesthesia, and at the same time, when the mean arterial pressure is low. It associates with increased mortality. You, studies have shown that when the base value is low, leading which leads to low blood pressure and hemodynamically unstability, the mortality is increased. Also, there is a concept of triple low. Triple low means base has base is low. That is, base value is uh, that is there is a deep anesthesia. There is low mean anesthesia uh, mean arterial pressure. That means again because of deep anesthesia. And low and tidal anesthetic concentration, agent concentration. How does it happen? Low anesthetic concentration should not lower bis. Rather, bis should not be low with low anesthetic concentration. So, what is actually if there is a low bis, low mean arterial pressure, and low anesthetic concentration, in spite of lower concentration of inhalation anesthetics, the bis value is. Un, unduly low, and there is also low mean arterial pressure. This is called as triple low concept. And what does it signify? It signifies that low bis is because of and low uh, anterior anesthetic agent concentration is a state of sensitivity to anesthetic agent. Means the patient, in spite of having low tidal concentration of uh, anesthetic agent, the bis value. Is low. That means the patient is more sensitive to anesthetic agent, and thus leading to low mean arterial pressure and a poor outcome. So, <clears throat> low base, low mean arterial pressure because of deeper concentration of anesthesia can lead to poor outcome. But when it's triple low, that is low anesthetic concentration. In spite of low anesthetic concentration, the base value are Low, that is the deep anesthesia, and the mean arterial pressure falls low. That means the sensitivity of the patient is high for that anesthetic agent. That's why. So here you need to know reduce the concentration further. You may be keeping the concentration on a at a appropriate level, but you actually because the patient is sensitive, you need to reduce the anesthetic concentration because he is very sensitive to anesthetic. <coughs> Uh, post operative delirium uh, is we all know is associated with <coughs> increased mortality and mortality morbidity and long term cognitive and functional decline so excessive deep anesthesia is a risk factor in high risk patients is associated with development of post operative uh, delirium and po post operative cognitive dysfunction whenever in patients who are at high risk, like who already have some neurological disorders, or there is a cardiovascular disease, elderly patients who are at high risk of developing uh, POD, post-operative delirium, a deeper plane of anesthesia can further can assist with post-operative cognitive dysfunction. And so, uh, <clears throat> several studies demonstrate this guided anesthesia significantly lower this post-operative dysfunction. So that is one more advantage of using this. On the other hand, Engaged trial reported that low, despite lower anesthetic concentration and less ET suppression in BISCOR, there was no significant difference in the risk of delirium, but reported significantly low 30 day mortality. So, <clears throat> again, there is some controversy between the studies, but there is still a, a use of this uh, BIS monitoring where you can, in high risk patients who are at high risk of developing post operative cognitive dysfunction. This adequate level of BIS using BIS monitors can reduce the uh, this uh, mortality as well as uh, post-operative cognitive dysfunction. <laughs> so now I think limitations of this monitor. Uh, I will take uh, Doctor uh, Zulfi. Can I continue for one or two minutes? I'm just finishing. Yeah, yeah sure, Doctor. Uh... Yeah, another, uh, we can continue for some time. No issues. Yeah. Works so hard on all this. Uh, limitations of uh, current depth of anesthesia monitoring. Well, currently, 
available depth of anesthesia actually they are directly measuring the concentration dependent effect of general anesthesia on the brain basically what they are measuring is the effect of anesthetic on the brain and indirectly measuring the state of consciousness so they are not exactly the direct measure of consciousness they are measuring the effect of ga on the electrical activity of the brain and thereby driving the numbers it's not the direct measure to uh, state of consciousness generally do not evaluate the patient stress level during surgery that is nociception most of them are only talking about hypnosis and are not do not account for all anesthetic drugs like ketamine nitroxide xenon all these are excluded this is the limitation emg and other high frequency electrical artifacts are common especially in, uh, like cautery and all those can interfere with your uh, monitors artifacts interfere with the data processing and producing produce a lag time so when there are artifacts there is a lag between the actual real state and the, when the monitor tells you suppose the patient becomes light right now and the monitors tell you after 30 second they can be a mishap because of uh, movement or some other frequency frequently that eeg effects are not good predictors of movement what we are actually measuring is the hypnosis not movement and use of depth of anesthesia in children is not well understood so these are the limitations currently available monitors <clears throat> so finally the key points of this uh, two classes is depth of anesthesia monitoring may be useful tool to help the clinical clinician prevent the complications of too little or too much anesthesia that is a that it may be a tool to help a clinician whereas Whereas antidepressant anesthetic agents may be su sufficient for preventing awareness during inhalation anesthesia, but for TVA, the EEG-based depth of anesthesia monitoring add insight to these for total intervention anesthesia. <clears throat> EEG-based monitoring of depth of anesthesia is intended intended to complement traditional monitoring method during anesthesia. Actually, they it's not a absolute replacement of traditional method. You have to actually see the uh values along with the clinical parameters so that you do not miss uh, some uh uh i mean you are not <laughs> missed by the values of the monitor its primary aim is to adapt anesthesia to individual's need the main aim is to adapt uh, anesthesia to individual need so that the patient can recover more quickly and be at lower risk of awareness while under anesthesia as i said every patient is a different patient these monitors have been developed on vol volunteers using 1500 volunteers or some few volunteers but that is not the representation of the whole population so every patient can behave differently so the primary aim is to adapt anesthesia to individual needs so that the patient can recover more quickly and be at a lower risk of awareness while under anesthesia eeg based monitoring could in theory directly monitor the neurological response of two anesthetic agents but in reality monitoring eeg in a clinical setting and turning it into a reliable tool for monitoring depth of anesthesia is challenging and that's why there are limitations to our depth of anesthesia monitor despite these challenges several methods of eeg acquisition and processing have been developed and approved for clinical use and as we see there are multiple monitors in the market available for use while these devices have potentially clinical activity they have inherent limitations at present all these devices depend upon algorithms developed using certain patients or volunteers the threshold and type of eeg changes that identify lack of awareness may vary from every patient and thus the signal are prone uh, signals are also prone to interference by artifacts and equipment failure or malfunction may lead to risk of misinterpretation and the result, resulting consequences that is too deep or too shallow anesthesia uh, <clears throat> main factors contributing awareness at present are intentional light anesthesia like in patients high risk patients high anesthesia requirement of the patient so like patients have got those, um, like some patients are very sensitive the other spectrum is that the patient may be Uh, may not even with the educate those he may not be educated in anesthesia so high anesthesia requirement may be there for the patient so if you monitor uh, depth of anesthesia you can prevent uh, i mean uh, such things and equipment failure they are may, may, they are the main cause of awareness 
at present. Not only cortical brain structures, but also deep subcortical structures are involved in the human conscious, consciousness and arousal that can lead to failure of your equipment. This may be one reason why this monitoring, which is based on cortex EG monitoring, may fail in prevention of awareness in some patients. <laughs> and lastly, the depth of NSA monitoring technology is promising and used widely. Nevertheless, to date, no health authority has so far recommended that such monitors should be compulsory during the anesthesia. Yes, there are incidents they have guide, come, recommended use during high-risk patients and in TIVA, but not compulsory in all patients. And they should be considered only on individual basis. So with that, I finish the talk. I'll be happy to take any questions if they are. And Thank you, Dr. Gyaninder, for an excellent, exhaustive talk. Uh, you have put so much of efforts into the preparation of this lecture. I thank you. There are uh, some questions. There, has, there are some, there are some rather doubts from our postgraduates. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the questions, uh, one of our postgraduates has put it, uh, is there any ideal number, EMG number, below or above which, sorry, above which we can uh, take a proper BIS value if there is an EMG number above which uh, we can say that uh, the BIS reading is reliable. Mm -hmm. uh, what should be the ideal EMG number? Yeah, 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 exactly. Actually, BIS is a processed EEG monitor which tells you the depth of anesthesia and the ideal number it is 40 to 60, right? You are not going to get any raw EG over the base. The, the, the panel is, it shows raw EG running, but what you get is a dimensionless number, which is from zero to 100. Ideally, for a adequate depth of anesthesia, you should maintain around 50 plus minus 10, that is 40 to 60. So within this limit, you are almost sure that the hypnosis part, that is the, reco uh, the recall of explicit memory and uh, awareness would not be there. So ideal number for under and for anesthesia would be 40 to 60. For deeper sedation, it would be below 80, 70, 60 to 70 or 75. And for lighter plane of anesthesia, uh, for an sedation, it would be above 70, that is somewhere around 80 to 90. So these are the, uh, if the signal quality index goes below 15, the BIS disappears. <laughs> what can we do to ensure there is signal quality? Okay. See, signal quality index below 15 means you don't need to actually tell anything about BIS. Here, the BIS is not at all reliable. Your signal quality index should be if I say the in say, uh, terms of percentage, it should be at least 80% and above. Then only this figures become liable. And it that this is basically the signal quality is poor means there is the recording from the electrodes is or either the electrodes are not properly uh, uh, gathering or attached. There there's interference with, with the gathering of there's a what you call resistance impedance. So the values are very less and these are not reliable values. Uh, yeah, uh, signal quality index, as you're saying, it should be greater than 80 to 90. Then only we have reliable BIS readings. And uh, there will be definitely a relationship between signal quality index and uh, the EMG numbers. An increase in EMG number will decrease this signal quality. Uh, Dr. Yanindar, there's another question. Uh, do response entropy and uh, train of four monitoring correlate with each other? Is response there any... entropy and train of four. <laughs> no. Uh, actually, uh, response entropy is not only uh, what you call as EMG. It is EMG plus EEG. Yes, uh, it can be a kind of Parallelly, you can say if there is an EMG activity coming up, it will be picked up by train of four and it will be picked up by RE, but it cannot be an alternative or correlation. There is no correlation being 
described between the two. Uh, basically, what I want to tell you is these RE, which is based on EMG plus EEG, newer monitors will actually, have, which have got no uh, like uh, nociception as a part of that with hypnosis and nociception, they will give you two uh, numbers. One is EM, based on EMG, one is based on EEG. EEG would be some telling you something about nociception, noxious stimulus, bringing out pay, change in the uh, EMG signals and EEG signal because of hypnosis. So newer monitors like QCon, QNOX, which have now come into market, they use this property of recording EMG to give you nociception part of it. But as such, uh, this uh, train of four with response entropy, there is no correlation between the two. Yes, whenever there is a patient, there is a movement, uh, I mean, EMG activity from uh, frontal is, uh, that means uh, train of four may also there, but there is no correlation between them. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Gyaninder, uh, we have a question uh, in state entropy, in entropy, if state entropy values indicate adequate depth of anesthesia, but the response entropy, but not response entropy, can it indicate inadequate muscle relaxation? Uh, actually, uh, I said muscle relaxation, these monitors are not for not for Relaxation. Ideally, muscle relaxation should be monitored with train. Uh, I was neuromuscular monitoring. This would just indicate you that there is some uh, stimulus, EMG stimulus from the frontalis, which can be because of noxious stimulus, pain, uh, all these things. So uh, we should uh, actually uh, not go that we are going for muscle relaxation, but we should think of, uh, think of that, yes, there can be a uh, likely that the patient early awakening can be uh, uh, taken into account. So we should not uh, take it as an alternative to neuromuscular uh, monitoring. For reliably neuromuscular, uh, neuromuscular monitoring is only the reliable way of uh, knowing the muscle relaxation status. So we can summarize the response entropy. It may be a response to the nociceptive stimulus. Yeah. Yeah. A pain, patient may sense pain and there may be a reflex frontalis muscle contraction. Yeah. Yes. Rather than saying a relaxation, yeah. it's inadequate. Uh, any other question from any of the students? Dr. Kyaninder, thanks a lot for an exhaustive talk. Zulfika? Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Uh, yeah, ma'am. If, if the students are done, then I have a question for Gyan. Uh, yes, Gyan, we uh, we know that sometimes we are not able to apply the. Uh, I mean, all there are limitations to applying the frontal electrodes. So, yes. what is the validity of the alternate uh, sites of electrodes? Like, if we choose the other sites, there are sites available. I mean, they have been discussed in literature. But do you think the readings would be as uh, valid as the, the ones we been, when we apply it on the forehead? Ma'am, uh, you cannot be very uh, very sure about the validity, ma'am, recording of these. Yes, you can have some idea. There are studies which are uh, saying, uh, yes, there is a uh, correlation. Uh, and uh, like you can, they give you some kind of correlation. But the values do not exactly match what when you record from this. So the reliability goes low, but there are so many studies where different sites have been quoted and they say reliability, but then again, I said, there are some studies which are saying, others are refute, refusing the effect. So there's no conclusive evidence, but yes, people, patient, people use it at other sites when they don't use it. But uh, reliability, ma'am, that remains, uh, a questionable because have you have you experienced have you used it in any other site except for the yes, uh, we have used it. yeah we have used it uh, in patients uh, over the uh, mystoid region we were okay. used, but when we compared it with the frontal region the values were quite different they were okay. not exactly the same 
they you only thing i can say they follow a trend similar trend but okay. they are not reliable they okay. if that it, it becomes deep the both will values will go slightly down if it light the both will start upcoming they may be delay in the uh, uh, in in response from one then other means they are not but they are not exactly similar at a time they are okay. okay thank you so gyan so much for this wonderful lecture with lot of hard work work and lot of love you put it into into this thank it's a so treasure much. indeed and i think many many batches because it's a very contemporary subject many batches are going to benefit out of this lecture so preserve it it's a treasure sure. you know thank you so much thanks dr gyaninder uh, yeah uh, just a word of caution also for our uh, post graduates in uh, neurosurgical practice where we have patients with hydrocephalus so uh, this may give a low false reading so that has to be kept in uh, mind once we use uh, this in uh, neurologically ill patients so if we have patients with gross hydrocephalus the bis value may be low but the patient may not be deeply anesthetized so that is one thing that is to be kept in mind and the second thing uh, we have to keep in mind uh, once we are using various agents halothen is now uh, Uh, rarely used uh, once we use halothen the bis values may be slightly higher and similarly for sevoflurane the bis values may be lower for ecumac concentrations so if we are using ecumac concentrations of halothen isoflurane and sevoflurane the bis values may be higher for halothen followed by isoflurane followed by sevoflurane and one thing which you pointed out was uh this can be used as a marker of hypoperfusion so this can be used uh, there is an increasing literature uh, many uh, reports coming that we can use it in uh, neuroradiology as a marker of hypoperfusion so our post graduates may use this in such areas yes these are some additional points and since you have added it i will just uh, conclude by one more uh, experience we faced in the ot a patient <coughs> was undergoing craniotomy and was on tiva so we were using bis for that patient so we found that the um the bis after induction uh, and with maintenance the patient bis values were extremely low so we reduced the uh, drug infusion rate still it remained low we further reduced it is still remain low and uh, you know we were almost in uh, a dose of sedation mild sedation the bis values were still around 40 and 45 with very very low doses so uh, the problem was that patient was that patient had a was a disorder hepatic disorder actually the drug was not adequately metabolized in that patient so whatever drug was giving was given was not properly metabolized leading to increased concentration in spite of very low uh, volume of a drug which we were giving that led to the low bis and uh, and high depth of sensation so basically you know every patient may behave very differently if the metabolism of the drug is not adequate what will happen is the drug drug will accumulate and when you add more drug it will become a higher in high concentration will patient go deep we have reported this also in a journal uh, last year so these are some of the things which you might uh, find that if suppose when you have uh, even with low doses and you have a very low bis there one thing is increased sensitivity which i discussed secondly the metabolism of drug may not be proper so that the drug concentration remains goes high and cause low bis so there were wide variations you can see during your clinical practice steps yeah thank you and uh, also uh, wherever we have bis i would encourage our students uh, that we should use it uh, i also remember as you have pointed out one incidence the bis suddenly dropped to zero and within few seconds we realized that the aneurysm had ruptured so it was probably due to very low cerebral perfusion pressure so it can definitely help in the patient management once we have the monitor we should use it if it's available in a hospital i think we'll end today's talk thanks a lot thank you
Dr. Thank Gannifer. You, Thanks Dr. a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am and everyone for being here. And Thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you. So definitely. Much.